Daily Rewind Show with a cat named Mo and Johnny B. WHPT, Sarasota, Tampa, St. Pete, The Bone. Now, the black guy and the black guy. Wait, that can't be right. Now, it's Pork Chop and Mudbone. Pork Chop and Mudbone? That's even dumber. Oh. Here it is. It's the Bone Daily Rewind Show with a cat named Mo and Johnny B. Hmm. I should have stayed with Pork Chop and Mudbone. Three of the Bone Daily Rewind Show. Welcome back to us, BDRS hosts. Already? Already? <laughs> yes, already. No, I want to do it organically. <laughs> you can't give me that weird yard bird look and then make me do it. I have no weird yard bird look. Do it's the same look you've yeah. seen every year. Do we refer to everybody as the flock? <laughs> no, you do Ooh. not. And I'm going to find out since you didn't tag me in your little yard bird tweet everybody that's liking it and you're all going unblocked on my twitter oh yeah like that'll ever happen <laughs> exactly that's johnny b that's nervous jared booty fence over there being very very quiet good i mean yeah i love her uh we also have and would like to welcome mr chris gorgeous and tiffany barbie to the show how are you two doing Good, thank Fine. you. Yep, thanks, thanks for, for having us. us. Yep. Uh, anytime. Listen, anytime we uh, love fellow comedians and fellow friends, and we like to foster a uh, an environment of inclusion here on the Bone Daily Rewind Show. Uh, I, c- I can see that with the Yardbird discussion. <laughs> yeah. Really include you into everything. <laughs> Chris, you're a man of the world, all right? <laughs> you understand the racial implications of referring to a brother on uh, during Black History Month as Yardbird, correct? I First of all, I'm a friend. I'm a fan that you call yourself brother. I don't know why you would <laughs> yeah. do that right out of the gate. <laughs> Thank you. Ask me a question like that and then throw that on me. No, I, right, right? Uh-huh. Now, when he talked about supporting stand-up comics, uh, he worded it so eloquently, not one black person listening is going to be like, yeah, that's one of us right there, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I love that, man. Say it. Say it, boy. Say it. The, there is that implication of the racial thing with Yardbird, but for me, it just looks, I, I, all I can picture is a sickly pigeon. That's all I got <laughs> in my head. Pigeon. Just some pigeon that's out there on a lot somewhere. Yard, oh, the Yardbird's the cock of the walk, man. There's nothing what? sickly about the Yardbird. Bird. I like how you slip that word in there. All oh, nice, nice. He, he rules the yard. That's why he's the yard bird. That's, that's why, why you call yourself that. No, oh. that's why you got to respect them. <laughs> respect the yard bird. Well, then you should be happy about yeah. that. Then you should be happy to be called the. the... Well, when you boil it down, I'm still being called the chicken. <laughs> Ain't no wrong with that. A fried chicken. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Tiffany, you've dealt with a lot of black men in your life. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Is it that obvious? What? Is it by my voice? Can you tell him a fat chick? Should I fat nothing? Should I tell Yardbird you're a karate instructor? Oh, really? Are I you? am. I'm a fifth degree black belt. I she teach martial arts. Kick your ass. Fifth degree. Yeah. She's put down more than a few Yardbirds in her yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it on. You want to fight, Mo? Hey, no, Everybody was friends here. They actually, she she teaches a, on Tuesday nights. She teaches a Yardbird self defense yeah, class. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, I do. W- where do you teach at? That's fascinating uh-huh. to me. I teach in Palm Harbor at the uh, Activity Center in Palm Harbor and at the North Pinellas YMCA. So I kind of run my business out of some recreation centers. MasterTiffany.com. Wow. There you go. Throwing it out. Throwing it out. I'm sorry. I really, as a black man, can't uh, (laughs) Google anything with master in front. That's what I, sometimes I feel really bad when I get black students. I'm like, I'm sorry. You have to call me master. (laughs) I mean. can't call you like sensei. I'm sorry, but Because that's Japanese. Take one down. <laughs> it's master. I'm Master Tiffany. It's either a dominatrix wait, thing or something. I wait, don't know. Wait, wait a minute. This is karate in Japanese. She teaches taykwondo, which yeah, is Korean, Korean karate. Korean. Korean. Oh. Korean. I teach taekwondo and kickboxing and yeah. some mixed martial arts. Okay. A little. So I believe in Korean, I believe it's kwajanim. Is that still yeah, what you like call it? Yeah, like sabanim. Sabanim, well, kwajanim. Call me a yeah. yeah. <laughs> Master. I'm just going by tradition. It's not like I'm like, I think I'll be a master Well, you today. white people in your tradition, I, I tell you. Listen, well, I don't know if you know this. Whenever it suits them, Jared, it's tradition. I'm <laughs> down, yard bird. My, my, my son's a black belt, and he went to an all-black instructed taekwondo school in uh-huh. Brandon. So they would be sometimes he'd be like, yeah, I'm Quaj and them. That's uh, JoJo and them. That's little Ray Ray and them. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. 
<laughs> Tiffany's branching out, though. She's going to teach racial diversity on Sundays. So there's going to be no martial arts involved. Just talking. I, I can see that. She'd probably be great for it. Now, you two do a pot. You do, in addition to stand up, and, and we, and you said it, and I know you're probably right. The more I talk to you, I know we've come across each other yeah, yeah. In, in our years as stand up comedians. I see you writing that down. Oh, you so know I, I am, Yarbert. I see you writing that down. <laughs> Uh, where do you? Where have you performed primarily, Chris? Uh, I've worked in all different clubs. Uh, Comedy Zone chain. I've done shows at the Improv, Coconuts, all regional up into the Carolinas. Were, were you around during the Ron Bennington comedy uh, I was. scene days? Yep. Off, yep. Right off of damn, uh, you guys are old. Yeah, right off of nineteen. I hooked it up. Had a show with Warren Durso. Oh, I remember Curtin Warren Boy. Durso. <laughs> oh, Warren. oh man, you're going, now you're going way back. He is way back. Himself a little bit. I'm old. Yeah, uh, that's, it, I know. I'm okay. Look at that. <laughs> okay. You look great, Thank Warren. You. They're so still is he still kicking, still doing stuff? Yeah. He just they just did an article like two years ago and I think it was Esquire or what was it? Some LA mag and it was the freakiest article I've ever read. He was naked in oh, the yeah. p- picture, just naked holding yeah, his I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that, that too. That was weird, man. And I think very disturbing because Warren looks a little bit like Avocado Rocker, no, but man, yeah. <laughs> but except he's not completely insane like Avocado. He's insane in a comics kind of way. Yeah. But absolutely hilarious. Yeah. When I first started, Warren was a vet forever and they were like sure. yeah this guy you want to learn thing. from this guy i'm yeah. like yeah, that sounds yeah, good Warner, so i don't know that medicine man was ever <laughs> 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 now our webcast is called the double special show we've been doing it for about three years it's on every wednesday night double special show.com it's me tiffany and another guy jb lee who's been my comedy partner for years in the area i had an improv troupe the charming hooligans for a while and he's uh, i remember the charm of there course you, you do go. i remember yeah. the charming hooligans the absolutely okay the there you are short form improv for i don't know like four or five years jordan was one of the anchor guys uh nyu uh, tisch school of the arts grad really funny dude not a stand-up a theater sort of improv guy right right yeah. i know my now did you used to have like a a, a fat guy with the charming charming hooligans not real fat a couple but, okay because here was my first introduction to them it was really funny and awkward at the same time <laughs> i was uh you, you guys used to do a theater coconuts theater like a movie cinema theater. cafe yeah well there was a they had a book where it was a stand-up show, mm-hmm. and then the Charming Hooligans were coming into a midnight show. Um, I was opening, I was featuring for, uh, God, who's a blind chick? The, uh, the blind chick? Uh, blind Renee, chick? Renee Bray. She oh, she's blind? Right, well, yeah. she's legally blind. She always needs a driver, right? Yes. I never knew that. That's yeah, like yeah. Daryl Lennox. He, yeah, he yeah, wouldn't yeah. know oh, that, that I knew. Blind. No, yeah, I knew well, he was blind. Yeah. This is when I was... I, I, know, I had 15 minutes, maybe, and I'm featuring for her because I think she paid me 20 bucks and probably got 50 from the club. But I, uh, yeah, <laughs> probably. He's bitter. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just he saying. hasn't let it go. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. Whatever. Anyway, but I'm I'm standing in the lobby after my set, and uh, this chubby dude comes up and he goes, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I go, "Just hanging out." And he goes, "You should hang out for the improv show after uh, the stand-up show." And I go, "Oh yeah," and I was really interested. I go, "I go, oh yeah, really?" And he goes. Yeah, we're way better than that horrible comedy show that's going on right now. And I go, <laughs> and I go, I go, I go, I go, I go. Were you in there just now? And he goes, he goes, yeah, I was in there. I go, the guy that just got off stage, did you did you like him? And he goes, that guy sucked. And I go, I was, it's me, you jerk off. Like you weren't in there. You're just making this up right now. Like you're gonna win me over like this. I was like, ah. Well. He walks to Johnny. Hey, you want a second chance tonight? <laughs> yeah. Right. You want another chance? I'll give you another chance in an hour. That sounds like, like Jordan. It, <laughs> Jordan, it wasn't was it? Jordan. No, <laughs> no, okay. no, no. I, like I, don't know, I don't know who, but yeah, we have, like you know how the comedy is. You get your rotation of head. It was funny, people. though. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I busted him so cool. I was like, it was me, you jerk off. He's like, uh-oh, walked away real fast. I'm like, yeah, go. Whoa, like, we're about to sumo up in this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yes, and I'm leaving now. I got to go. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And, and what do you, what the podcast is primarily about, or is it just, what do, what do you guys do? What, uh, what's we, the nature of it? Well, we, we started with just Jordan and I. We added Tiffany on. It's primarily about stand-up. We talk a lot about stand-up, because obviously Tiffany and I are working comics. Right, right. Uh, but we have callers that call in from Australia, England, and they talk about all manners of stuff. We got the, the guy, Brad McLean, who calls in from Australia, does uh, prank calls in Australia. He called the, the, the he minister. He called the Pope. Yeah, he called he the Pope. Wanted to he be called a some, Pope. tried to call so the Pope funny. to see <laughs> what it would take. Uh, to be the Pope if he was Australian. I don't know. But the funny stuff. A lot of different people calling in. We've had uh, some comedians. Kevin Bartini has called in from New York. He warms up the Daily Show and just recently helped to get uh, George Carlin way named in, in honor of George Carlin. Oh, nice. Uh, and then about a year ago, we were involved with a project that got Andy Kaufman inducted into the World War, uh, the uh, WWE Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm not a wrestling fan, but I'm a huge Andy Kaufman fan. Right. So anything I could do. I didn't even uh, know so we, they, Yeah. So they you got his ass kicked one time, right? <laughs> yeah. On WWE, uh, one of those? He, well, there's the fake. 
famous incident. I want to say was it was, was it yeah yeah. yeah. And was that on Letterman? With the- it was on Letterman. They had an ongoing feud, and then later on, we found out that it was actually a big ruse, and that they were working together. Uh, it was it's fascinating. You know, we talked to Bob Pagani, who was this guy who did like stunts uh, publicly for, in the seventies and sixties, and worked with Andy Kaufman, and he called in to talk to us. And yeah, Andy Kaufman fooled a lot of people with a lot of stuff. A yeah, lot of people. Yeah, yeah. He well, he died uh, real young too. Was he in the early thirties or there, was it- there are people that don't believe he's actually. Oh, dead. Oh, he's dead. We had a guy Those call in. Are cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's on an island with he's Tupac and Bigfoot. Dead. No, this guy said, this guy yeah. said he was in Texas. <laughs> Dead. Don't listen to those people. 727-579-1025-800. 771-1025 while so, we got them here if you like any questions. So tomorrow comedy. night, tomorrow night, and this is what we want to get out there, and you got free well, tickets, right? Well, why don't we do that? Tickets. Well, I was going to hold that over to the break to, you know, tease well, was, it over. I was going to tease it. Uh, we can get them calling in oh, for tickets right now. He's going to tease it. Yeah. He knows yeah. how to tease. Exactly. Yeah. I forgot we can get some tickets You know, like sometimes I, I, I rub your little uh, feathers here, Yardbird. Yeah. Tickets for tomorrow night, 8 o'clock at the Improv if you'd like to go see uh, Chris, you are headlining. Yep. Tiffany is featuring. You're going to do a stand-up show and then the podcast live on stage? No. What we're doing is uh, basically we're going to mix some of the elements with the podcast into the stand-up show and, as, and improv as well. So the I love opening, it. The opening of the show will be what we call check-in, which is basically you know news of the weird, uh, and we sit and bicker about our opinions about it, which is I think is pretty funny. All That's, right. We, we'll we'll oh. get into more detail after the break, but yep. load up the phone lines now. 727-579-1025-800-771-1025. We'll be right back with Chris well, no, we, we still, we still have more time. What? Yeah. I thought we, you said we were going to break. No, no, no. I was just going to do that <laughs> part so after confused. the break, but we have time. We're good. What the hell are we doing we're, then? <laughs> we're going to talk some more about them. We have it nicely set up. They oh. can start calling in now. Ah. How many pairs of tickets do we have to give away? And they're gonna A be million? Paired. 109. <laughs> 109. I wanted, to find, I wanted to ask because you said your mm-hmm. show your, is about stand-up and questions about that. Yeah. What do you think, Chris, is the... Best thing about stand-up comedians coming out right now, and the worst thing about them, and then I want I want Tiffany you to answer that question as well. Wow, that's a really good I, question. Yeah, I, I, start with the worst. What What are you seeing instead? Because you're out in a lot of clubs, just like Johnny. I'm not mm-hmm. so much. I'll go in when I'm performing, uh, and, but when I'm in, I'm typically drinking if I'm not performing. Yeah. So I'm not in there watching them. He doesn't watch the, the comics. The occasional <laughs> contest or whatever that His I did is always <laughs> to the ground. Yeah. yeah. But what do you think is the worst? I can tell you oh, what know. I've seen in a couple, and it's it's just it's just a lack of understanding that in a room when you are starting out and you're yes. just doing five minutes, you got to do that clean. You have that yeah. that has to be clean. Sure, you can't be using the f word and and the p word and and the, the I mean yeah. you know you can maybe drop one mm-hmm. you know right. real strategically, but again in a five minute set. That that'll kill you if, if uh, the majority of it is profane. I you know I'm on the fence with that because I do use the f word liberally in my show. No, no, I do yeah, too. But, but I don't d- get dirty. I notice a lot of comics get really dirty, and I they don't yeah. curse. But man, the stuff they talk about, you're like, okie dokie. That's uh, yeah, okay. Five minutes up front right. before the headline sure. or the feature has even gone up, mm-hmm. which is disrespectful to the flow of the show. You know what I mean, Johnny? Right? Why well, traditionally the you know you got to build up to something like that. You don't want uh, a guest set being dirtier than the feature act. Right. I mean, that's right. just, that's kind of weird. You know what I mean? But, but there are cats that don't understand that. Well, there's people that just suck at comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there you go. Break it down like that. No, it's yeah. true. Look, when I first started, I you know it, it is a defense mechanism, and I had a club owner. I did an open mic, and I got on stage, and I said, "What'd you think?" I, I thought I had a really good set, and the only thing she said to me is, "You said the f word 15 times." Yeah. She literally counted yeah. every time I said it, and that really put me off. Was so, that in a five minute set? That was like a five minute open that's mic. A lot, dude. You know, I, that's but that was that was when I first started. Now I know better and I know how to pace myself and I can really, you know, like then I don't think I could have done this without cursing. Now I, right. now it's not a problem. Uh, but for me, the biggest thing with the younger guys is the clickiness. It really drives yes. me insane. I don't like the fact that they look at a comic my age and go, you're nothing. Yeah. You're nobody. You, we don't know you. You don't hang out in my club. You don't come to the, the bar afterwards and party with us until four in the morning. It's like, no, I have a kid and I would not, I, it'd take me a month to recover from that. Right. So and I can't com- do that. Comedy is one of those art forms that has nothing to do with age. That though some of the funny cats out there, if not the funniest cats out there, are the older cats because the more you yes. live, the more you have to say. Well, exactly. that's, that's how I feel exactly. about it. When I look at them, I'm like, what have you done in your life? Yeah, I yeah think- and I got people that, that, somebody said something to me about a month ago, like, oh, well, your career has gone nowhere. And I go, no, it's right where I want it to be because I'm a single dad. Guess what? This kid's going to college in three years. True that. Then I can do whatever I want. I've been offered tours with big guys. I, I can do whatever I want at that point. But yeah. right now, 
I'm headlining fatherhood, and I'm trying to <laughs> knock this show out of the park. So don't tell me I'm not a you're, success. You're headlining. You're working with big names. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm still working pretty steady, uh, you know, for a guy that's balancing two jobs and everything else. But, yeah, I mean, I, sometimes I do regret not hitting the road at 20 years old and being, you know, further along. But at the end of the day, uh, and I'm sure Chris can attest, mm-hmm. uh, to trade, uh, you know, raising your kid, there's no way. There's not, it's not even a comparison. So, uh, you know, your kid to be grown one day, and you're not going to get less funny. We get funnier. No, right. We have more experience. Uh, same thing with radio. Somebody goes, wow, don't you wish you would have jumped into radio at 20? Sure. Kind of, but I have so much more to talk about now. Mm-hmm. At 20, I didn't know anything. Yeah, Absolutely. More stories, I had more nothing experience. to talk right, about. Right, right. I, I, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, at that age, when I was younger, I was emulating other comedians that I right. thought I thought this is how it should be. I didn't have my own voice. It takes a time to it, get that it voice. It does, and I remember, and I and I came up with a lot of cats. Uh, I mean, I came up with Brewer. I came up with Dan before he was Larry the Cable wow. Guy. Uh, You're Katie, pissed at all those guys, uh, aren't you? Uh, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you know what? You know what? I really am not because uh, very early on, and this was this was the smartest thing that I think I did because I am not a traveler. I don't have a wanderlust spirit about me. I knew you just keep. I, in the yard. I, yep. <laughs> Shut up, Jerry. <laughs> uh, uh, technically, that's what I'm, about, what I'm about to say. Um, when I when I came up to the point that I was ready to feature, like like the Brewers and, and and like the other cats that were coming up around me, I was offered the house MC gig. It was the comedy corner before it was the worst. Right, right there on Kennedy. And, and that, I that's said, my first set, yeah, same place. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And for five years. I was on stage six nights a week, yeah. and I developed the ability to go in front of a crowd, and I can I can give you forty five minutes without it without a joke. Yeah, just and and it it really honed my skill that helped me in television, that helped me in my writing, and uh, and a lot of Everything. other things. But I just knew early on, even though I liked going up and making people laugh, I looked at the road and I go, that is not for me. Yeah. That is just absolutely one hundred percent not for me. And then I wanted to also be a writer, and that's what I kind. Kind of gravitated right. towards so i i don't feel bad about them I, I will tell you this we had a big group of people there was a big group of us and if you would have asked me if jim brewer was going to be the one to to do what he did i would have said you're nuts <laughs> you're not. he had one bit the angry pigeon yeah. in the parking lot that he that it later transmorphed into joe pesci well you know what's <laughs> funny they just released after the snl show they just released a bunch of audition tapes and that was his whole audition he did literally eight minutes of different uh, of voices bu- so funny. And so it, it, was, it was so it was interesting to see, but you would have been like, and it was a great guy, and probably still is. I've talked to him off and on here and there, mm. but uh, you just would have, you just never know. Yeah. You just never know who's going. Who would have looked at Dan Whitney and said, "Okay, this guy is going to be Larry the Cable Guy." I saw him right after he kind of went full time with that bit, and I thought it was awesome. And I didn't realize it wasn't. I didn't realize it was a character. I sat at the bar and he talked, and I'm like, "Oh, wow, you're that's what really." Then I was even more impressed. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you had not. I'd known him as Dan Whitney. I no, I did not. Yeah, I remember it was a radio bit. I, was it ninety eight Rocky? Ron. Yeah, it was Ron and Ron. It, it started. He exactly. started it with Ron and Ron, but he actually started it on stage out at the comedy right. uh, corner, and and it would be like five minutes. He would literally because right. he would do uh-huh. a, a voice here, and then he would do this one joke or two jokes about uh, Larry the Cable Guy, and then I saw it kind of you know take on a little bit more. One day they, he just got drunk and ripped his sleeves dude, off. Uh, one day, <laughs> well, you know, this, it's funny you say that. One day he went away, and then he came back in the entire. Act was the Larry. Thing. The whole thing was Larry the King. Well, that's what I heard. The, her, the story I heard was that uh, he had an agent, and the agent was like, "Why don't you write forty-five minutes as Larry the Cable Guy? Uh, wear the outfit, go on stage, and see what happens." And of course, uh, the rest is history. I hope he from made that, that, that agent a very, very wealthy person. I don't know if that's a uh, true story, but that's what I heard. I probably it sounds about right because it was a very, very funny bit, and he committed to it. And I tell you what, when you saw him as Larry, you didn't want him to go. He was okay as Dan. <laughs> I can say this. Because because the guy has gotten more money than he will know what to do with and can spend in a lifetime. He was never going to make that as Dan Whitney. That was not going to happen. Sometimes the way that ha- it happens, it is an organic thing. That's what we're trying to do now. I- I've always had a day job. I- we've done the podcast on a regular, consistent thing. I've talked to a few people who have successful podcasts and are like, just do it consistently. Now I- I'm in, a- in between jobs. I worked in the medical field my whole life. 
Uh, and now we're doing, Tiffany and I are going to go on tour. We're going to try to push this and, the, and do the podcast. That's why this show is kind of important. It, it sh- kind of showcases the stand up with that, with the, you know, the elements of the show and then improv at the end. Like, who's line game? Is this right. like a road test of taking it on the road? Uh, t- a couple of the, we're going to do either the stand up show or the double special, maybe both you know, simultaneously, whatever we can work out schedule wise. Right. Well, we're going to do a lot of stuff together. Like, we yeah. just did a show at Finley's in Largo, like, what, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And that went really, really well. And that was like our first official Tiffany kind of was like. Funny and cute at the same time. Aww. Oh, I have to. Admit. I was born this way. What can I say? <laughs> we are going to come back. We're going to give away some tickets, but I want to talk to you, Tiffany, about being a, a female in the stand-up okay. game because it's very, very different for it women is. than it is for men, and I think you probably have some interesting stuff to say. You guys could talk as girls. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Am I a girl or a yard bird? Well, you make up your mind. I don't know, Marissa. You tell me. <laughs> this is the Bone Daily Rewind Show. The Bone Daily Rewind Show with a cat named Mo and Johnny B. Real Raw Radio on 102.5 The Bone. Back to The Bone Daily Rewind Show with a cat named Mo and Johnny B. Or The Problem as they're called in Arcadia. Yeah, I get it, you're an outcast. Always under attack, always coming in last. Bring it up the past. No one owes you anything, I think. You need a shotgun blast to kick in the ass. So paranoid. Watch your back. Welcome back. It's the Bone Daily Rewind Show. Myself and Cat Name Mo, Johnny B. Uh-huh. We have Nervous Jared in the third seat, as we always do. Here we go. <laughs> he's busy. Doing yeah, he's, something he's on doing a lot of artwork. Yeah, I just posted another... Uh... Another picture that you wanted me to post? <laughs> I didn't want you to post anything. You I don't, told me, hey, to post it. I don't recall saying that. Right, hey, Jerry, bird. tag me in that post. <laughs> yeah, I believe that's what you just said. Booty Fett, taking your call, 727-579-1025, We have with us, and we're going to get back to him in a minute after I play your open mics. We play, I should say. Chris Gorgeous, Tiffany Barbie, two uh, fellow comedians that are doing the show tomorrow night out at the Improv. We'll get the start times. It is a unique type of show that they are testing out and will be taking on the road so you can say that you saw it here first in the Tampa Bay area. We want to make sure you give them some love. We're going to give away some tickets to that event in just a little bit, but uh, let's get your open mics out as we like to give you every Monday through Friday in the 9 o'clock hour. The open mics are a feature of the Bone app. The Bone app is powered by Bush... No, no, it's not Bush Signature anymore. It's 1-800-411-PAIN. And uh, we love that you submit them. Here they go. Let's get it right there. Mo basically told Phyllis he was a Glade air freshener. Plug it in, plug it in. All right. <laughs> I don't know. They get better, right? <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> Are you the having caught a rocker? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Avo is being held so uh, against his will. <laughs> the one that Drew hates is the biggest cockroach in the building. Very simple. I know, but we have to figure no. out who that is. I don't know who it is either. I have no idea. Mo hates black people. L O D. L O D. L-O-D. Uh, L- some of them are just for those people. Hello? Yes, this is Saul. And I love the BDRS so much it hurts. Oh, God. Uh, that's really not was Saul. He, was he taking a poop? Uh, who is it? Uh, who did he sound like? What's the... From the Simpsons. That's yeah. It. Or not Simpsons. Uh, family Guy. That's what I got. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mort. That's it. Yeah. Mort from the Family Guy. Let's... Hello? Yes, this is Saul. And I love the BDRS so much it hurts. Oh, God. I think he's just doing that like was a, a horrible It wasn't Saul from Jerky Boys? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That might have been closer. That yeah. might have been closer, Chris. Um, did you see the episode of um, about Better Call Saul? Yes. Last night? Of course what, I did. What did you think? Love it. Yeah. I love that show. Good, good stuff. No, oh, you haven't. Oh, no, we're we're not going to spoil it for you. It's on our to watch uh, list. Are, are you Walking Dead fans? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Did you watch the Walking Dead episode? Yes. And? Wasn't bad. 
Okay, that's what I thought, too. It's starting to go downhill a little bit, don't you think? No, I think it's setting up nicely. No, yeah, this is the correlation I made. I thought the first half of the season opened up really dynamic Mm -hmm. and then drew down. I think this one is drawing up, and I I prefer that better. When you see the previews for next week, it's it's about to get badass. Yes, Now, did you see last week, last night's episode of two nights ago? No, No, I haven't. She she may be more up on it. I'm like a season off. I binge binge it. I'll binge it. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm about two seasons back because I end up watching it later on as well. Oh come no, on! No. Yeah. Spoiler alert! <laughs> did, did, when you when the wind when they were trying to get into the uh, barn, yes, I I knew it was a tornado, but nobody else in my my apartment knew it. Did you know it was a tornado? I did not know it was a tornado. I did because you know it's that specific uh, kind of whistling sound. And I had a feeling when they woke up and the zombies had given up that the tornado wiped them out. And then when they showed the aftermath, that was pretty badass. What I thought was badass <laughs> prior to that, and that was badass, was that I thought the imagery of just the flashes of light yep. without showing the zombies and all of them up against it trying to hold it, that was badass. It was very thrilling that video. Was, <laughs> yeah. that was, why are you two laughing over there? <laughs> that was badass. You know what was badass? This other thing was really badass. This is so badass. badass. That was badass. I don't yeah. know if you saw it, but it was badass. Was that on your word of the day calendar? <laughs> so that's of the day. I'm, I'm with you all. What did you tweet? It's you win yard birds feed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That is hilarious to me. <laughs> Wait, you did? Oh, there it is. <laughs> you see the size of that chicken? Uh, it was badass. Bad I'm just saying. Bad 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 yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, a kitten named Moesha. <laughs> Listen to the yard hen. <laughs> Guess which bone host undergoes surgery this year? Hi, guys. This is a cat named Almond Joy. You know, sometimes it feel like a nut. Hashtag Yardbird. Almond oh, Joy. Hey guys, loving the Yardbird. Hey buddy, give me a call. <laughs> Dribble around. Oh, you uh, you messing around with Sleepy Garabo? I wish I was. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey Yardbird, what's going on, Yardbird? See, see what's gonna happen now. That, 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 see what's gonna happen. It's catching happen. on. That guy made it sound racist. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Come on out here, Yardbird. I got a little something for you, Yardbird. It's your nickname, though. Exactly. All you Yardbirds aren't marching to Selma if I got something to say about it. And in today's news, Sesame Street just hired a new main character. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Yardbird. Okay, there you are open mics. We love it. Thank you uh, via the Bone app, uh, powered by 1-800-411. Page. Oh, my oh God. My oh, oh yeah. somebody got some feathers in his nose. You okay, Yardbird? Uh, <laughs> that sneeze right there was yeah. badass. <laughs> <laughs> that was a badass sneeze. Uh, I, I, could, I could contain awesome. that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can't cage the Yardbird. Yeah. It's so gross. <laughs> All right, Tiffany. Tiffany yes, Barbie. Yes, no. uh, female comedian, yes or I no? Am. Do you want to be a... Am I a female <laughs> No, comedian? I know you're a female comedian. <laughs> I am. Uh, she is the Laura Jane Grace of, uh, of, of uh, comics. Uh, do you feel that the road has been easier for you or harder being a female? Um, I think it's easier. Like, I do feel like a lot of people are like, uh, kind of feel that females are not as funny. I feel like that's out there, unfortunately. Now, do you feel that from audience members or from fellow comics? I just feel like people in general and fellow comics, but there aren't that many female comedians. Like, the last booker that I talked to said that a good good female comedians are a dime a dozen. And, you know, there's like... <laughs> really? Four, like, yeah. So now whenever people are like, oh, I need a good female comedian, they're thinking, okay, Catherine Maloney Larson, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tiffany's a possibility, you yeah, know. You know, Mona, you know yeah, Mona, right. yeah, well, yeah. There's, there's like five of us. Yeah, they're you know hardly I mean? a dime a dozen. They are, I yeah. mean, not good ones. Good I don't ones think that means what you think it means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, do you think dime a dozen is good? <laughs> what is it not? Oh, boy. <laughs> That's why girls don't do comedy. What does it mean? <laughs> do I have to Google it? it mean, you, what you're saying is that there are there a lot of good many. female comics out yeah. there. There are a dime a dozen that you could throw a stick and hit a good female comic. Yeah, there's so no. there's such a wealth of female comics that are okay, good wait. that you can get a dozen you know of them for what? a dime. You know what? There's so many. I, met, I think the guy who told me that didn't know what it meant. Because uh, I'm just copying yeah. and he acted like there weren't that many. Look. Chris is saying there's so many of them you can hit them with a stick. I don't even know. And you won't even get oh in trouble. Oh, my God. I don't, know, I don't know Tiffany. words. Words you're a, are hard. You're a comic. I know my words. 
No, she's very focused. When she gets on stage, she's got all planned out. Oh, yeah. But in everyday life and conversation, we're all over the road. Anything I'm can happen. I'm glad you pointed that out because as she was talking, I'm going... Well, that doesn't okay. make any sense what you say. Chris, Chris is used to me not making sense, and that's what makes our podcast yeah, funny yeah, yeah, because yeah. I don't make okay. sense half the time. Yeah, good. I don't. I don't know what's going on. Good female comics are not a dime a dozen. I They're very was, rare. I thought it was improv yes. round, and you drew out out of the hat to <laughs> say something <laughs> stupid. I thought, listen, listen. I thought, and scene. This is what I thought. I thought there were a dozen dimes, and oh, that's boy. all there was. What? I don't 20. know. This is a, this is an element. This is a perfect example of an element of our webcast, our podcast, where we deal. We used to have a segment called Tiffany Epiphanies. These were when <laughs> Tiffany had a epiphany about something that all the rest of us had known for years. I like that. Yeah, like and, that. and they're not fake. They're true. We don't make them up. She just goes, oh, you know, know you that. can tell that that was very organic. Yeah, that was really she, just, uns- she just kept going on, and I didn't want to stop her, and that's why I just I said, "Why well, don't they're not really a dime a dozen?" Yeah, don't be polite. You could just stop me, and I'll learn. I'm taking a life lesson right Aww. now. Aww. I, I think. Thank you. If we could play some sad music. And- <laughs> All right. So anyway, female comedians are not that common. <laughs> no, no. And good ones. Right. Good ones. So uh, around here, I think we get booked a little bit more than the guys. Like there's a lot of young 20-something, 30-year-old guys. So it's really hard for them to get gigs, I think, right. because they're like, oh, we're looking for a 20, 30-year-old young like, and, and a dude. lot of times, the material will overlap mm-hmm. each other. You know? Yeah, and we all have our uh, different outlooks. I think of all of like, the... 10 maybe female comedians that are around here, if that. We all have our different ways that we do comedy as well. Right. So if a booker knows what they're getting into, they're like, okay, we want this before this guy. So it's really easy for them, and I think we do get booked a lot it's more. It's especially easy for a pretty female, which you are, a very yeah, pretty yeah, female comedian. Yeah, I'm in the comedian. pretty female yeah. group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me... There's four of us. Now, that she understood. <laughs> that she understood, Chris. Yeah, of course, yeah. And I'm like the last <laughs> single one. The rest are married. So the booker's like, maybe we could Wait, man. Most, <laughs> no, most single Mark, uh, female uh, comedy. Yes, I am. Oh, I'm sorry, Not Yardbridge. single nor female. Email. Mark, <laughs> uh, go ahead. Hey, Mo, how you doing? Good, we doing well. Do, uh, we used to do stand-up over at uh, Ron Bennington's, and I know uh, Chris knows me because he comes and sees me like, every weekend. Chris does cannot hear you. He doesn't have that phone. What's your last name, Mark? Uh, Byrne. Mark Byrne. You know Mark Byrne? Mark Burns. yeah. I think, is that the balloon guy? That's the balloon guy. Yeah, the balloon guy. <laughs> the Absolutely. balloon guy. Yes. Oh, if anybody's ever been show. to Lenny's restaurant in Clearwater on the uh, weekend. I, I, I've been, I used to go to Lenny's. I haven't been there in forever. But did yeah. you ever get a balloon animal when you were there, Mo, uh, as an I adult? Think, I think I did. Because you have not lived until you got a yard bird. bird. Yes. <laughs> he made him a yard bird. He made him a yard bird. You need to make him a yard bird animal balloon. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I just want to congratulate Chris and Tiffany on the show for tomorrow night. Oh. Uh, I'm going to see if I can actually come up to the improv and uh, check it out. Sounds uh, like a great show. All right, hold on. We might be able to give you a pair of tickets. Can you hold on? Sure, that'd be great. Okay, he wants he wanted to congratulate you, and I'm oh. telling them, Mark, because they don't have headphones That's on. That's fine. I, I uh, can kind of hear. Yeah, congratulate you guys, and wants to maybe get out there. Do Are we just going to people? We have two callers that want tickets. Can yeah, we you, just give them to them? You yes. guys have all the tickets they want, right? Yeah, Slap yeah, it, yeah. Let yeah. us know. We'll you put you on the list. Them. There's not okay. physical tickets. We'll just, put you on the uh, list. Take both. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me talk to Rebecca. Rebecca? Yes, hi. You, hey, you hi. wanted to go to the comedy show, correct? Yes, that's correct. Are okay. you old enough, Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 35. You're 35? Okay. Wow. Yeah. You sound adorable. Oh, thank you. Aw. You're welcome. Are, are you a midget? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Rebecca. I'm going to go to a comedy show. They both get tickets. Go get their names uh, and their She's a normal-sized person, Johnny. Very small vocal cords. Yes, ah. yeah, exactly. Uh, and how long have you been doing stand-up, Tiffany? I started doing stand-up comedy five years ago. I moved back from England, and I decided that would back be fun. Back from, whoa, 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 back from England. What were you doing over in England? Taught, Being funnier than everybody in England? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I taught martial arts over in England for the, like three years, and then I moved oh, back whoa, here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you get a gig teaching martial arts over in England? She's Master Tiffany. Yeah. I'm actually really lucky with my martial arts because I'm such a high belt. Like, I'm a fifth degree black belt. And, like, people will find me and just offer me jobs. I don't think I've ever actually had to go, like, find a job. Did you love it over there, or are you, were you glad to get back to the oh, States? I loved it at the beginning, and then I got to go to France and Germany, and, like, I got to travel around doing seminars right. for martial arts, but then the sucked. food was so bad yeah. that did, I had to move back. I had to. It was you, the worst Did food. you ever kick a British guy in the mouth and go, oh, I messed his teeth up? Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. When I went to the dentist, the, the dentist guy was like, your teeth are amazing. I'm uh, like, I know. 
Like he like he's, he you was got the greatest me. mouth on the planet. <laughs> Somebody take a picture. He of did. <laughs> One more break. We're gonna talk more comedy with our guest Chris Gorgeous and Tiffany Barbie. We uh, may have a couple of surprises for you as well. This is the Bone Daily Rewind Show. Mm-hmm. The Bone Daily Rewind Show with a cat named Mo and Johnny B. Welcome back. It's Bone Daily Rewind Show. Last break, as you should know, if you're a regular listener and you hear this beautiful scarred face foreign black guys singing this <laughs> lovely melodic tune you know yes he bangs girls that he would never bang if he wasn't a star and it's almost time for us to wrap up this bitch i, I, I think you might i think what? you might uh, you know uh, underestimate the appeal of seal outside of if, the... he, if he wasn't a star you think he's pulling ass <laughs> he's a very tall imposing i think he's good looking with even with the scars yeah He's a yard bird. Uh, don't listen to the uh, yard bird. Tiffany, do you think Seal looks handsome with the scars? No. He looks okay. like somebody threw no. hot grits in his oh, face. He really does. All right, all right. Look, yeah. he's scary looking. I'm the only one. I would have to turn the lights off. You know what I mean? And then, and then never you wouldn't be able, able to find, find him. him. That's a black dude. <laughs> like, a really black dude. Yeah, I really, I need you to smile, Seal. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> he's like Patrick Ewing black. Right? Yeah. No, he's so black, actual Seals are like, I ain't that black. 727-579-1025, uh, As many people that want to go to the improv tomorrow night, 8 p.m. start, uh, to see Chris Gorgeous and Tiffany Barbie. And, of course, uh, the double special. That's the name of your, your show, right? Double, double special, special show. J.B. Lee you. is also in the show. Yeah, Jordan J.B. Lee. Lee, double special show, stand-up and improv, mm-hmm. uh, the whole thing. It's it's a, it's a comedy extravaganza. It's so spectacular. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think there's going to be a ton of people there. So uh, you have free tickets. If you call in, talk to Booty Fed, she'll write your name down, get you on their guest list. Uh, for absolutely free. So uh, do that. Right, right. And yep. go ahead one more time while we have the chance. Explain to them what, what this is. Give them the podcast, how sure. they can hear the podcast, what days it is, uh, the website. Give us all of the information and explain to them what the show is going to be about. One I'll more explain time. the show. You give the info. How about that? The show okay. tomorrow night at the Improv is uh, stand up. Uh, Tiffany will be featuring. I'll be headlining. Jordan will be doing some improv in between the sets. And at the end, we'll end with some uh, whose line is in any way. It's kind of short form improv. Uh, involve the audience. It should be fun. Sounds great. All right. And our website is doublespecialshow.com. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at Double Special. Chris is at Gorgeous Comedy. And I'm at Tiffany Comedy. I, u- yeah. I usually follow back. Um, you have a couple of people following you now. I, yeah, I saw, you have yeah. quite a few. Thank uh, I you. I tagged you. And yeah, they wanted, um, to, they wanted to throw dimes at you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't know. You'll find out if you follow me, all sorts of stuff. I don't know. The way I, I actually, I'd like to give Tiffany and Chris and, and Double Special uh, a big thank Thanks. I owe the I owe her a lot. Uh, when Tampa Bay's Got Talent went down to get this gig on the station, she was one of my biggest supporters. She was out there tweeting like crazy, Facebooking oh, very like. Nice. Tra- I really yeah. Did, yeah, I mean, I, had she not done that, I may not have beaten that sucker that got second. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, was thanks, it you? Thanks, Tiffany. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, like I don't know. For some reason, my brain really got excited about the numbers. Like I was playing a game, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna get them more. I'm like, I feel like I have power. I was her power. candy crush. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> was. Let me tell you something. You cannot crush. under estimate the power of having somebody like that. Oh, it was corner. awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You you deserved no, it. Uh, I didn't know you, Mo. I'm sorry. <laughs> whatever. But you know, what, you're here. whatever. She kept <laughs> saying, why is Johnny up against Whoopi Goldberg? <laughs> whatever. I, I, yeah, I was really confused about that. Let me ask you something. Why did you not uh, participate in the contest. We did. We did. Um, we. That's how much of an impression of we left <laughs> on you two fellas. And, 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 no, I saw you there. <laughs> Wait, no. I know, I know. I had lunch with you. I actually yeah. ate with yeah, you. Yeah, I between. didn't see you there. I do. We got up there, and the guys were like, to me, the yeah. the why are you with these old Yeah, dudes? they're like, they're like, why is a cute girl like you? Or like, they're like hitting on me. They're like hitting on me. They're like, why are you with these guys? Like, <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you this. Did, what was your number? Do you remember? 
Uh, no, no it's a, we, a have a, yeah, we have a picture on uh, on on Facebook of us outside. Yeah, that, that Joe Von guy remember. was taking. I was I was sixty. I was like sixty something. And then I had to leave to go get my uh, kids, so I couldn't yeah. stay and see the entire. We event. were like two thousand two hundred and ten. So that's why. I so didn't see like, yeah. no, you were you were on before me. He was on before. Right. Oh yeah, I was I on way theirs. before you. I was, yeah, I was one oh five. Yeah, I remember. When I didn't you guys even went see out. you, Johnny. Yeah, because I was one oh five. Yeah, you were already at home asleep when I went. I don't know. That's why I was pissed off when I went up. That was a long well, day, wasn't it? Like, wow. oh my gosh! I mean, there was a line. I had to wake up before the sun. There was a line. It was like cold. Well, listen, the problem was, and you don't really want to, uh, you know. I mean, you want everybody to have a chance, but there were people clearly within sure. five seconds that you needed to be gonged. Right. And I think the judges, I remember them feeling bad about gonging people. The uh, horn the, blasting. Yeah, the process of getting rid of those that shouldn't have been on there needed to be right. refined, and you could have condensed that down. Probably a third of the time that it Yeah, there took. should have been people that got two words out and bam. Yeah, like, they, they anybody, didn't blast us. Yeah, anybody yeah. that said, I want to take it to the next level. Uh, <laughs> the, the guy that I had to stand next to in line, number 104, that son of a bitch, that landscaper that just kept know. on uh, radio voicing me. Oh, wait till I get up there. Man, <laughs> wait till I get up there. Oh, check this out. Oh, I got this. I got this plan for him. And I kept going. Stop talking to me, dude. <laughs> Just stop I, talking to me, bro. Seriously, I don't want to talk to you. It was hard for me because I felt like, uh, you know, our show is so honest. And it's really, we've got a nice organic vibe between us. There's a lot of bickering and honesty. It was hard for me to even begin to portray that to them. So I didn't know, you know, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, how do I make you see what our podcast is without you actually hearing it? Right, In two right. minutes, it's tough to do. Right. Yeah, you got to yeah. get up there and uh, and just let it rip and it was that, that was the thing too is i i didn't have a plan like i was just actually angry i was angry and so I was i yeah. Yeah. i want to do what you did but i was yeah. like i don't want to screw myself out of this <laughs> well lucky for me that's pretty much how my stand-up works most of the time too i'm usually running late and i'm pissed at traffic and i get up there and i just unleash and i go man they're good. they hate me now and then uh, they go no it was a good set and, like, that, oh. and that is that's his style right there that is yeah. absolutely it chris gorgeous that's actually his real name Realist. we found that out yeah. chris gorgeous and Tiffany Barbie. That's your real That's name. That's my real name, too. I was yeah. born with that name. I did not come up with that. There you go. <laughs> they will be performing together out at the Improv. The showtime is 8.30? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock uh, tomorrow. And it... Uh, it promises to be something you know, way more than just a stand-up set. So go out there and see him if you are around. Uh, make the time to do that. Then I remember the first him. time I met him. Somebody goes, "That's Chris Gorgeous," and I went, "He's all right. He's all right. He's all right." <laughs> yeah, he's all right. I mean, if I was gay, I mean, maybe in a pinch. He's all right. Podcast one more time. Uh, DoubleSpecialShow.com dot com every Wednesday at eight thirty to ten thirty. It's a two hour podcast live on YouTube streaming. There you yeah. go. And now here's some of the gayest. Mo has said today. <laughs> Here we go. Um, are we getting to the meat of it yet? <laughs> you also said, before we get into Mike Calta. <laughs> I did. You also said, I know we've come across each other once or twice, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You also said, you can plug anything you want. <laughs> Also talking to Chris. I did. The guy is gorgeous. And last, oh, oh, here's another one. You said, uh, I've always wanted to be a Marissa. <laughs> I heard that one. Go ahead. And tomorrow on the Mike Calta Show, Jim Brewer, who you were talking about earlier in the show, will be joining them to talk about SNL 40. Nice. Jim, Jim Brewer, do not forget on the Drew Garabo live show, it will be... Laura Jane Grace. Laura Jane Grace, the lead also singer. Also Tom Gable. against me. <laughs> also Tom Gable. Javon, we mentioned him. He wants to talk real quick. Go ahead, Javon. Javon? Yo. Javon. Yo, yo. No, Javon's no. done. I was going to you, Javon. I don't know where Sad. you went. Don't know where you went. Always got room for you. Go ahead, Johnny B. Write that down. Uh -huh. Javon always got room <laughs> always for you. Always got room for you. <laughs> yep. He will put on Jovan Musk to talk to Jovan. What did we learn tonight, folks? Well, we learned that, uh, as always, stand-up comedy and comedy in general is alive and well and thriving in Tampa. Check it out tomorrow night at the Tampa Improv. Double special. The whole crew will be there doing stand-up. Chris Gorgeous, Tiffany Barbie, and J.B. Lee. Uh, and absolutely free if you hurry up and call right now before we turn these phones off. Uh, you can go check out our friends at the Tampa Improv tomorrow night. Make your Reservations, 813-864-4000 or ImprovTampa.com. 
That is about it. Don't forget to a very special guest we uh, have, as Jared said, on the Mike Caltus Show, Jim Brewer. Funny, funny, funny guy. Local guy. Make sure you tune in for that. Caltus Cash. You listen at 7 to hear the open letter, the classic Galvin's open letter at 9.30. They'll ask you a question about it, and you can win $500. Drew Garabo giving away that cash, too. Give it to him, Yardbird. We're still working on Yardbird's feet. We're going to try to get that. Yeah, we're working on Yardbird's feet. Laura, Jane Grace on Drew Garabo Live at 3. We'll be back. Actually, Johnny B. Will, I'll be out at Quaker Steak and Lou. That's right. Give them a listen. They are still, even without me, the B-D-R-S. Show with a cat named Mo and Johnny B.